If you run a retail store, you may need to collect sales tax on the things that you sell. Even if you don't sell through a public location, you may be liable for collecting tax on products you purchase and pass on to your customers. The rules for collecting sales tax vary by state. For example, clothing in New Jersey is not taxable. Food and services in general are not taxable, but you'll need to check with your tax agency to learn what's taxable and what's not. This video shows you how to set up and use sales tax. First, I'll show you how to turn on sales tax in the company file. Then I'll set up sales tax items which store the actual tax rates. And finally, I'll explain what tax codes are and how to use them. When you set up your company file, QuickBooks may have turned on sales tax based on your business. If you need to collect tax and you don't see the sales tax features, for example, you don't see the Manage Sales Tax icon on the home page, you'll need to turn on the sales tax feature. It's already turned on for this company, but I'll show you how to do it. Go to the Edit menu and click Preferences. In the left panel, click Sales Tax and Company Preferences. So this is where you would turn on the sales tax. Do you charge sales tax? Yes or no? So you want to make sure yes is selected if you charge a sales tax. Next, you'll need to create sales tax items, one for each sales tax district, such as state or county and city. You can add sales tax items directly from the sales tax preferences window in addition to the items list. And But since we're here, let's go ahead and click Add Sales Tax Item and click Sales Tax Item. Now for this company file, I've already set up one sales tax item for the state for 8%, but I need to add a local tax of 0.25%. So here in the sales tax name, I'll type local. And if you click in the description field, you can see that QuickBooks has already entered a description for you, but I'm going to add local in front of it. And then enter the tax rate. And the tax rate for this item is 0.25, so I'll type 25. Um, be sure to include the percentage sign. Next, choose the sales tax vendor. And in this case, I've already set up the sales tax vendors, Riverwood City Tax Agency. So if you don't have your vendor set up yet, which you might not because that's another video, you could add one on the fly by going to the top and choosing Add New. So click OK to save this item. So you would repeat these steps to add other sales taxes you're responsible for collecting. And you'll need a sales tax item for each district in which you do business. So say you have a retail store in one county, and you also sell your wares at an annual harvest festival in another county. You'll need to add a sales tax item for each county. And after creating at least one sales tax item, you need to select the default item QuickBooks should use on invoices. Using the example I just mentioned, I would select the county where I had my retail store and not the county I'm in only once a year. So here currently the most common sales tax item is the state sales tax. But I'm going to have to change that. This business in the sample file is in a town that charges an additional tax on top of the state rate and the sales tax is remitted to different agencies. So to handle this, you can create a sales tax group item. This way, the customer sees only one tax item on the invoice, but you can track the taxes separately. I have tax items for both local and state, and I want to group them together. So note that you only need to create a sales tax group item if you pay more than one agency. So check with your tax agencies. Some agencies split your single payment among the appropriate agencies. So click Add Sales Tax Item and choose Sales Tax Group. And the group name, I'll type, I'll just type Sales Tax. And click in Description and QuickBooks Enter Sales Tax. And now I'll add the individual sales tax items. So click in the Tax Item field and I'll choose Local. And then I'll choose the State. And you can see now the total is 8.25%. So click OK. And then I want that group item to be the most common sales tax item, so I'll choose it now. Let's go on to sales tax codes. QuickBooks uses sales tax codes to identify whether an item you sell is taxable. You also use tax codes to determine whether a customer is taxable. QuickBooks sets up two sales tax codes for you when you turn on sales tax, a taxable code and a non-taxable code. 
For most businesses, the two tax codes are all you need. However, some states require more detail on non-taxable sales, such as the reason for the non-taxable status. So you could create additional codes for this and run reports for the agencies that require more detail. Some additional sales tax code you might need to set up include a code for out-of-state sales and customers, a code for specifically for wholesale customers, and a code specifically for nonprofits, and another code for government agencies. This all depends on the requirements of your tax agency, so be sure to check with them. So I'll quickly show you how to add a new code. I'm going to add a code for my wholesale customers. So I'll choose Add New and click a three character code and I'll type WHL for wholesale and in the description I'll type wholesale and I make sure that non-taxable is selected and click OK. As I mentioned you assign sales tax codes to items which you learned how to do in other videos on items and to customers for example to indicate that a customer is non-taxable like a wholesaler who will resell your products You'll learn how to do that in an upcoming video. One more thing to mention is this option here, Identify Taxable Amounts as T for Taxable when Printing. This option adds a T on receipts and invoices to items that are taxable, so your customers can see this information. Otherwise, uncheck it, but I'll leave it checked. So now you know how to set up items for sales tax. Another video covers paying sales tax.